Hey everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to create custom error pages in Flask. So typically when you have an error in your application and you don't have custom error pages, then you just get the default Flask error page. But if you want to have something custom, then you'll need to know how to actually let Flask know that you want to use custom error pages. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video. So to get started, I'll set up a basic Flask app. So from Flask, import Flask. And then app is going to be Flask underscore underscore name. If name not using debug mode. I'm just going to use um, production mode, I guess you can say debug mode is not enabled. So I'll make it explicit. Debug is false. And I will create a route on the index just to start, but I'll change it later. OK, I just want to verify that this is working. So flask errors. All right. OK, so it's working. So first, let me show you an error page for a 404. Does not exist. This route doesn't exist. It just tells me not found. This is a very generic error message. Uh, but this is probably something you don't want your users to see when you're on when they're on your site. So let me create an error handler. So it's very similar to routes for errors in Flask, but instead of a route, you're just specifying the error code that you want to pass back a custom error page for. So to do that, you use app.errorhandler, and then you pass in the, the error code that you want to cap, uh, capture, so 404. And we'll say error 404 is the name. It can be whatever you want. And then return custom error for 404. And I'll put this in header tags so it's easier to see. And Flask doesn't set the error code for you. So if you pass back a tuple of HTML and error code, Flask will pass that back. So let's see, we have custom error for 404. So I'll restart the server. And there's one thing I forgot. I just need to pass in the error. So this route takes in one parameter, it's the error. So let me restart that again and go to this page that doesn't exist. Okay, so I get custom error for 404. That is my custom error page in a sense, it's very, simple and you probably wouldn't use that but instead you have a template for your error page and then you can return a template and then do uh whatever you want after that but this is just demonstrating that you can pass something back for the error so let's try something else let's try a 500 error because that's the one we just saw so 500 we want to find error 500 it takes an error we turn 500 error. Now pass back 500 as well. So I need to generate a 500 error. The easiest way to do that is with divide by zero. This will cause an internal server error. So let me restart the server and then go to the index where it has divided by zero. And I have my custom error page for 500. So I'll show you one more. I have Postman ready for this one. I'll do error handler 403, I believe it is. I'm doing method not found. I believe that's 403. It's either 403 or 405. So I pass an error, return, method is not allowed and I'll pass back a 403 and now I need to say 
for this route, the only methods that are allowed are post methods. So that way, when I go to this URL in my browser, it won't work because it's looking for a post instead of a git. I forgot to put that in the list. So let me restart again. If I go here, I get uh, this error, which is not the right one. Let me see what error code it is. 405, so it's not 403, it's 405. So let me just change that to 405, save it, and then restart the server. And now I see my custom error page. And if I create a post request, I should get back, well, it's gonna return one divided by zero. So successful post requests. Okay, so if I create a post request on the index, I'll get something back. So I see successful post requests. But if I send a get request, I get a method is not allowed. So that's it for this video. Just know that having custom error pages is very similar to creating routes. If you just look at this, the syntax is uh, very similar. The only difference, of course, is error handler here, and you need to pass back the actual error code. So you have, if you have any questions about this video, just leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video, and I will talk to you next time.